Hi, my name is Michael Maurer, and I'm going to be demoing how to set up a Kibana dashboard for viewing log to timeline output. So I've already gone ahead and exported my log to timeline to Elasticsearch. Um, I followed the steps in my uh, four-part blog on log to timeline to Kibana. And I went ahead and exported the XPT Dungan case from the SANS course. So the first thing you want to do is set your index and go ahead and set your time date field. And then when you create a dashboard, you're going to want to go ahead and create a search first. So you can go over to the Discover tab. And you're going to want to set your time to something reasonable to your case. So for this case, I set it to the last 10 years. Um, then you're going to want to set what fields you actually view in your search. I generally like to use the source underscore short to tell me like what kind of logs they are and then the message field. And I'm also going to do the path spec, and I'll explain this later in the video. All right, so that's it. All you really need to do to create your initial search, and I'm going to go ahead and save that as search. And you're going to want to save that so you can use it later in creating your visualizations and your dashboard. All right, now that that's saved, I'm going to go ahead and create several visualizations. The first one being a histogram, kind of like the one you saw at the top of that Discover page and I'm going to use that save search. So just go ahead and set date histogram as irrigation, aggregation, and then just use that. And I'll go ahead and split that. So I'm going to add sub buckets, split bars, terms, and I'm going to set that to the source underscore short. And what this will let me do is see exactly what logs are hap type of logs are happening at what times. And we want to use the dot raw and that's because that's going to be a non-analyzed field. And you can look at my blog or look at a Elasticsearch website and they'll explain the difference between those. It's kind of lengthy. Yep, and here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and save that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of pie charts. The first one's going to be just a simple file extension pie chart. So we know uh, where a majority of our logs came from from what file extensions. And again, you're going to want to go ahead and do extensions.raw. And I'll go ahead and update the total number so we can see more than just five of them. I'll save that. Next, I'm going to create one for your different uh, types. This will be like the difference between a file or a directory. I think it'll also work on links and uh, pipes as well. So this will be your metadata type dot raw. And I'll leave that at five. So we now know that, but as you would expect, most of our log entries are actually coming from files and then there's about 10% coming from directories. Go ahead and create another pie chart. Just a couple more. Uh, next one will just be the source underscore long. This is a little bit more of a detailed view than your source underscore short. Just saying where the logs came from. And I'll up that number as well to 10. There we go. And then the last visualization I'm going to create is going to be a little bit more complicated, and this is going to be your action type. So this is going to be like, is it a creation timestamp, a modification timestamp, your Mac times. So we're going to go ahead and do it a pie chart, but we're going to do a new search. And I'm actually search for only file logs. And then I'm going to split it by term. And the term is going to be the source underscore long. It'll make more sense once I actually show you. So now we have like modified access. And I'm actually not going to do raw this time. We're going to do the regular. And you should see the little warning. So don't do dot raw. 
so M time, CR time, C time, and A time. And uh, because we're doing a, an analyze field, it's actually going to pull out the word NTFS detect, which you don't want because you really only care about these other times. So we're going to filter that out. So you have to go to advanced and do exclude pattern NTFS underscore detect. And this will change if you're not using NTFS. So if you're using something like a, a FAT or a doing a EXT. Um, we're also going to limit it down to four so we don't get these other entries. There we go. So we have M time, A time, C time, and CR time. So create modified access and a change. Save that visualization. Let's call it Action Pie. All right, now we can go ahead and create our dashboard. So our dashboard is we're going to bring all these visualizations to one place. Generally, I like to put the histogram at top, followed by my pie charts, and then just have the search at the bottom. So we go to searches and then search. And then you can go ahead and rearrange these any way you like. So that's just generally how I do that. Simple, easy to use dashboard, pretty quick to be able to update your view and kind of see what you're go what's going on in your logs. So now to take it another step further and kind of get to more to what you saw in my previous video where we actually had thumbnails. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I was doing with this pass spec to get those thumbnails. So now you're going to have to actually install another tool onto your Ubuntu VM or your SIFT workstation called eFetch. So eFetch is a tool I created. There's an install guide on the wiki. It's pretty simple to set up and it'll give you this little GUI, but you won't even have to use that. So I already have it running, so I'm going to show you how to use it. So I'm going to go into my settings. I'm going to go ahead and search for Passvect. And we want the not raw, so just a regular one. And we're going to update it to a URL. And we're actually set to a type to image. And then here it lets us kind of build a template. So for this, I'm actually going to use so our website, so eFetch right here. So localhost on port 8080. <clears throat> Plugins slash thumbnail question mark path spec equals value. And that will give us our thumbnail that we can actually view. And I'll show that. So let's go back to our dashboard. And you'll notice over here on the far side, which I'll move over, we actually have our thumbnail. And the cool thing about this thumbnail is it's not just going to give you these little icons, but if we go ahead and look for something like extension JPEG, it's actually going to show us those JPEGs. And it'll lazy load these in so you're not, so it's not like doing a lot of pre-processing. And you can just, it loads pretty quickly. You should be able to scroll through depending on the size of the file. And that's it for this video. I'll probably go in more in depth and now how to not only just view the Passvect, uh, the thumbnail, but to actually view other files like PDFs and executables in a later video. Thanks for watching.